Today we're gonna to be talking about everything I pack for SoCal surf fishing. I'm gonna go over terminal tackle and any kind of gear that I prepare for me when I go out to the surf. My name is Benji, welcome to the channel, and I love to help you catch more fish. And one of my favorite things to say is if I can sting and catch a fish, you can definitely catch a fish. And this is exactly how I gear up and get ready to go surf fishing. I'm gonna break this up into two different sections. One is your typical light line surf fishing setup in Southern California, as well as how I gear up for when I go halibut fishing. But to start off, this is pretty much stuff that I prepare with me every time I go out. And this is during the summer months. And we'll go and start with what I wear. Uh, first and foremost, it's gonna be any kind of hat, whether it be the BKF hat, a Lucky Craft hat, a Phoenix hat. Along with that, this is actually something that I highly recommend, and that is uh, some sunblock. I actually like using a stick uh, as opposed to a spray or any of the white goop. Um, I like to just be able to do this and it can, keeps it clean, keeps it off my body and it's more of a simple way to apply. And when I'm just going out for light line surf fishing, probably throwing the Carolina rig on light gear, I want to be very minimalist when it comes to pairing my gear. First and foremost, uh, I'll always wear shorts. These are from Pelagic and these are the Ocean Master shorts. I like these because it has tons of pockets where I can put my pliers or any other, any other thing that I need to store. I love these shorts but they are a little bit pricey so if you are just looking to keep things on a budget, any kind of board shorts or regular shorts will do just fine. I also like to wear water shoes. These shoes are from Columbia, and I actually got this at the Columbia store outlet. They're about 50 bucks. I'm not sure if they're online available at Amazon. If they are, I'll go ahead and link them to you. If not, um, you can go into any Columbia store, but really, um, you can experiment with water shoes. There are a couple water shoes that I've been okay with on Amazon. I'll go ahead and link those for sure. But water shoes can be very, very helpful because uh, if you're walking the sand enough, there is a high possibility that you'll step on a stingray. And trust me, you do not want to get stung by a stingray. I've stepped on two stingrays and the pain that I experienced from those two times is something that I do not want to experience uh, ever again. And so that's one reason why wearing water shoes can be valuable. Another reason is something that you'll see on my shoe right here, and that's tar. Certain beaches, there will be tar on the beaches and it can be really annoying to get on your feet. This is also a pelagic performance fishing shirt. And I like this because it has a built-in face buff and it also has a little hood. And so it gives you the sun protection I need. It's very comfortable. It has air vents during the hot summer months to keep things cool. And I also like this shirt because of, again, once again, the pockets that I have. And uh, obviously I am a content creator. I'm usually filming for the channel. And so I need the pockets for batteries or any other GoPro related items. Uh, it just helps me a lot. Uh, again, this is a pricier item. Very, very expensive actually. I think probably 80 or 90 bucks. And so if that's outside of your budget, any I recommend any kind of dry fit uh, fishing shirt that has UV protection on it. You can probably find those pretty cheap on Amazon, but more than anything, it's the most important thing is to kind of stay cool. A cotton shirt is probably not ideal when you're surf fishing out there, but this is what I wear and it's, I found it to be very comfortable. It's been what I, it's what I've been wearing for pr probably the past three or four years. And it's still what I'm wearing today. The same set of clothing. Moving on from that are the sunglasses and I do highly recommend polarized sunglasses. And I found over my, over the years of experience that I've had that uh, you do get what you pay for. You can try getting the cheaper polarized sunglasses that I'm sure you can get for 20, 30, 40, 50 bucks. I found that those degrade very, very quickly. This is actually uh, Costa's and they are on the pricier side, but I also have noticed that, wow, they are very, very clear. Um, these are the amber color that helps me sight fish and I'm not always sight fishing, but wow, it really cuts the glare of the sunlight. You don't have to have these if you're not sight fishing. I don't find that I really need these when I'm targeting halibut, but when it's sunny like today actually, uh, it just looks like a bright light across the surface of the ocean and it's really hard to uh, identify structure when the sun's hitting the water in this way. And so when I put on my glasses, I can actually see dark spots in the water. It allows me to see structure a little bit better. So polarized sunglasses can be helpful. Um, they're not the most important thing, but it's something that you want to think about. And I do find that something like Costa's or Smith sunglasses, um, the higher quality, um, I think you do get what you pay for. And so if that's within your budget, um, I do recommend that. Some other basic things that I like to always pack, just one little bottle of water. This one's empty because I cut, I got a slash in here while I was walking down to the beach, but filled bottle of water can be very, very helpful, essential, especially if you're gonna be fishing for more than a couple hours. And I just get these from Costco. This is just a peanut, peanut butter bar and a fruit, fruit, fruit leather or whatever you call this. 
And I get a box of this and a box of this, and I just take one of these out um, and stick it in my backpack. And when I get hungry, it gives me enough energy to get through uh, the rest of my session. This is certainly not a uh, essential item, but it can be helpful. And it's a UV, UV light. <laughs> it's a UV light, and I use this for charging up uh, my Lucky Crafts, my Glow in the Dark Lucky Crafts, and I use this primarily for low light situations, and it can be very, very useful to have as opposed to having to use your cell phone. This is something that I highly recommend that I just recently added to my backpack, and these are uh, cutters, like wire cutters, and these are from Daiwa, so it's saltwater rated. Um, but any kind of cutters um, I would recommend. Why do I have this now and not before? Last year, if you remember the video, I actually barbed myself with the Lucky Craft and I had a hook go clean into my skin and almost out the other side, or no, I think it came out the other side. And so I didn't know what to do at that time, but if I had a pair of cutters, I could have cut that barb straight off and just pulled the hook right out on the sand. Instead, uh, I had to go drive to my friend Matt's house and we had to cut it there. So accidents do happen if you're fishing enough uh, something's gonna happen where you do get barbed. It's pretty much a guarantee. So even if you have the barb in the skin, it can be very, very helpful to just cut the hook off and keep it in your, in your, in your hand without having the whole lure hang off your body the entire time. So cutters are uh, kind of a good safeguard to have in your backpack. This is also a recent thing that I added to my arsenal and these are fish grippers. Uh, this is from Daiwa. Honestly, I don't know how well this has been performing. I had trouble gripping some halibut the other day but uh, any kind of grippers can be helpful, especially uh, can prevent you from getting barbed, which is why we have the wire cutters, but this can be very, very handy uh, potentially. So I do recommend a pair of those. And then we have two different kinds of pliers and that depends on what kind of fishing I'm doing. For light line surf fishing where I'm wearing the water shoes and the board shorts, I recommend actually these pliers and they're actually a lot smaller and I found that when I'm targeting, uh, when I'm using the Carolina rig and I'm catching Corbina and Yellowfin Croaker with smaller hooks, this is a lot easier to take the hook out compared to these ones which are a lot bigger and I definitely like these for catching halibut or white sea bass or bigger fish but when it comes to smaller fish, I like having these. In the past, I made a video a couple years ago, I recommended these really cheap hemostats. I don't uh, regret recommending that to you a couple years ago because they were so cheap. It was two pairs of hemostats for like less than $5. But what I found shortly thereafter is that they corrode incredibly fast. So I'm gonna go ahead and add these into the video description. These are saltwater rated, so they won't corrode on you and uh, they'll last a lot longer, a little bit more expensive, but well worth it in my opinion. So I do recommend having these in your arsenal. And then when it comes to leader line, for my halibut fishing and my Lucky Craft fishing, I like a 15 pound fluorocarbon leader. This is Daiwa J Fluoro and it served me uh, very, very well. It has a little bit of stretch in it, but mostly it's a stiffer line, but very, very affordable and, uh, and, and it performs just fine. I really, really like this. 12 to 15 pound, but 15 pound is what I like for throwing the Lucky Craft. Um, I found that to be my sweet spot. And I look forward to actually testing out Opsin. Uh, Opsin, thank you so much for sending me a bunch of your line to test out. This is a six pound fluorocarbon leader and you can use this for light line surf fishing. The six pound is gonna do just fine. I've heard good things about it. I haven't used it yet personally, but I look forward to putting some time into it this summer. Likewise, for the Carolina rig, light line, if six pound is way too light for you, then uh, 10 pound will be just right for that perch and corbina and uh, yellowfin croaker fishing for your Carolina rigs. So um, thank you, Opsin. I look forward to giving this a test and uh, giving you a review on how much I like it. Uh, but so far, I think it's gonna be real good. And then we have my fishing backpack. I get a lot of questions on how I get the rod holders on these backpacks. These backpack, this backpack, unfortunately, is called Fishing Pack, and somewhere last year they stopped producing. I think the company may no longer be in business, but this is the Fishing Pack backpack. Um, I'm gonna be looking for some alternatives. This is probably the last Fishing Pack backpack I'm gonna be wearing. I just recommend something light and portable. You can use the Sling backpack or any backpack that you can keep a couple of items in uh, that's gonna be mobile. This is the setup that I'm gonna be using most of the time for my Carolina rod. This is actually the Phoenix Trifecta Lite 904. And I really like this for the Carolina rig because if it's a rougher water condition, I can actually put a one, one ounce uh, sinker on here and I could probably get away with an ounce and a quarter um, on this rod and feel confident that I'm not gonna um, break the tip of the rod. It's rated uh, eight to 15 pounds, a half to one ounce and uh, very, very sensitive and really, really nice uh, for the Carolina rig. And it's gonna have plenty of backbone for uh, bringing in better grade fish. And this is the rod that I'll use for my Carolina rig. And I set that up with the Daiwa Fuego. This is the Daiwa Fuego 3000. I got the Gomex's power handle, which uh, actually increases your comfort quite a bit. And I got 20 pound braid on here. 
And again, your, your leader can be what you want that day. And I believe that leader right now is 15 pound leader because I'm fishing up, up north in the central coast. So this is my classic Carolina rig. And this terminal tackle is all you're gonna need if you wanna go surf fishing in Southern California, uh, light line surf fishing. You don't need to break the bank. You don't need tons of equipment. All you need is what you see right here. I recommend having anything from one quarter to one ounce for the Southern California surf. We got an orange bead. You can use an orange bead, a clear bead. All this functions as is abrasion resistance, especially if you, if you have braid on here, but that just works to protect your line from the sand. So barrel swivel, bead, egg sinker, that's all you need for the Carolina rig aside from the hook. We got your leader line and I already talked about this is 15 pound. For the Southern California surf, you don't need it to be that heavy. You can use eight pound, 10 pound, 12 pound, and even four pound and six pound. Um, totally up to you. Just make sure it matches up to your gear properly. Right here is all you're gonna need for the Southern California surf. We have a size four owner mosquito hook. This is like an inch and a half, two inch grub, but there's so many guys that are pouring incredible soft little plastics for the surf. My friend Josh, Big Lout Bath pours incredible stuff and gulp camel worms. You can pick those up at any Walmart. Highly, highly recommend that you have a pack of those in your backpack when you go out to the surf. But any kind of one and a half to two and a half inch grubs is gonna get you bit from the SoCal surf. So this right here is really all you need along with all the terminal tackle and gear to go out and have an incredible time of surf fishing in the Southern California surf. <music> So, but maybe you might be saying, hey Benji, I love the light line stuff, but I really wanna catch a halibut. How is that different? Well, for halibut, it's almost exactly the same. The only thing that's gonna be different is the fact that I'm gonna be wearing waders and I'm gonna be using a different rod and reel and I'm gonna show you that right now. First and foremost, uh, these are the Compass 360 waders. Uh, there's a lot of questions out there about what waders you should use if you've never bought a pair of waders ever before. I recommend a cheaper pair of waders that has the boot built into it, they're boot chest waders. They're definitely super affordable, maybe 35 to $40 you can find on Amazon and they're not gonna be the most durable. They're gonna break down a lot quicker, but they get the job done. And if you're just someone that goes out maybe, you know, once a month, a, a few times a year, uh, definitely go with the cheaper option. These are stocking foot neoprene waders uh, from Compass 360. This is my second pair in three years. And I've been on this set for a year and a half, going on almost two years now. So for me, for about 100 to $130, that's well worth the price. It's worth it. It's kind of a cost value ratio and if it's worth spending the money. And for me, since all waders are gonna eventually spring a leak anyways, whether you're using a $500 pair of waders or a $40 pair of waders, it's really dealer's choice and what you want. I found the quality of these is good enough for me um, and they might not be perfect, but I like them and I'll probably be buying another set after this one springs a leak because it's within my price range. In this waiter, um, I've also matched up with the Sims boots. And if anything, I do recommend um, these Sims boots just because of their durability. I've had this set for three years running. And for the past three years, um, I've switched out different waders, but these boots have remained the same. Other than me switching out the laces two times, uh, the boots are still running incredibly well. They've recently dropped down to about $130. They're a little bulky, a little heavy, but super, super durable and great for me when I'm walking over reefs and things like that. They've kept me safe. So that is something that I recommend, but just remember, just because I recommend it doesn't mean that it's right for you, because what works for me may not work for you. I'm just sharing with you my perspective and hopefully you can build a baseline to choose what, what you like the best. Aside from the waders, um, I like to use this little front chest pouch to hold a measuring device, but I like these because you roll them up and they're super portable. I hold them right here in the pocket and I'm good to go. Additionally, um, my Lucky Crafts, you guys have probably seen these little tubes. Unfortunately, these are no longer for sale from Michaels, but there's different ways to transport these Lucky Crafts. Uh, my friend Alan, who's behind the camera right now, likes to use uh, the little sunglass cases from Daiso. And he has them personally labeled. And I found that that's actually really, really creative and that can get the job done. If you can find a Daiso and find those cases, buy them up and you can put your Lucky Crafts in them. But again, this is one way that, that has worked for me. And I like to keep three of these in my pouch, just like this. Along with that, I have the D-ring to uh, clip on my pliers and uh, transport them. And aside from that, everything else remains the same. 
when it comes to my halibut gear. This is the Phoenix Trifecta Light 903 medium light, and we're not gonna be talking about gear too much. This is the rod I use. This is the Daiwa Cert Tape 4000. But we can go into breaking down what gear you need. I'm just sharing what, with you what I have. Uh, it works best for me. There's 20 pound braid on here with 15 pound fluorocarbon leader, and this is a 50 pound tactical angler's clip. And you can get a pack of 50 for like 10 bucks on Amazon. I'll leave the link below for that. But these clips allow you to swap your lucky casts really fast instead of having to retie. And that's it. 90% of the time, that's all I'm taking. A single rod with the lucky craft in my waders and I'm good to hunt halibut along with everything else I just mentioned. And a lot of times I'll be wearing this shirt and these shorts underneath it. And obviously don't forget your socks if you have neoprene booties. Uh, your feet will get st stuck or your feet will get really, really stinky inside the waders. So don't forget your socks for that. If you like this video, be sure to check out this next video on my three favorite ways that I like to target halibut. Thank you so much for your support. Until the next one, tight lines.